Well, all right, you are listening to CKUA. The program is Alberta Morning, and my name is Grant Stovall, and I'm really thrilled that we're joined right now by the artists that we just finished enjoying. The brand new single is a rendition of a song that's familiar if you're from a certain age bracket, such as my own. <laughs> His name is Hoxley Workman. Hoxley, it's so great to have you back here. Thanks for joining us. Grant, always a pleasure. Thank you. And, uh, okay, tell us a little bit about this song. Didn't see this one coming, frankly. <laughs> I started to do these deadpan covers of 80s songs this summer. Um, I've just been spending as much time in the studio as possible. And if I have a down moment, I just look to sort of occupy myself with something that feels like, you know, uh, that I can accomplish within a short amount of time and it'd give me a little bit of, th- bit of a thrill. And, mm-hmm. and so I've done, um, don't dream it's over Corey Hart's, uh, never surrender, never surrender and I have the tiger. And when you pull these songs apart and take them out of their sort of the, the pompous eighties production, they start to sound quite prophetic and Mm -hmm. deep and they kind of go places and we don't need another hero is it's a heavy track i had never noticed frankly until this version (laughs) i always kind of thought of it as just that song from the mad max thunder movie what an amazing composition i love the way that you've brought out the the real subtext or that or perhaps not even subtext just the underpinning meaning and it's very uplifting i find i do too you know somebody once explained to me you know that The entertainment business in the 80s was run by hippies who had, you know, were thinking about the stuff they were making was for their kids. And there was still, you know, living off the fumes of the 60s, there was a sense that popular culture needed to be of extremely high quality because these hippies wanted to make sure their kids were getting the goods. And so even when I think that when I was a kid, I was absorbing Tina Turner as a pop artist, as a 10-year-old not realizing that she'd had a career in the industry for 30 plus years at that point and that I was listening to somebody who may have been in their 50s or, mm-hmm. or at least late 40s. Right. And she wasn't the only one. Paul Simon, Steve Winwood, uh, they, they were the ZZ Top. There were all stars. kinds of stuff Yeah, was sold to us in the 1980s as, hey, you're a 10-year-old. Um, <laughs> You're going to like these weirdos with beard guitar or beards and carpet guitars, or you're going to listen to this Tina Turner. And I mean, the whole Mad Max thing was so bleak and spooky feeling when I was a kid. Like, but that song and the the, the vocal delivery, Tina's vocal delivery, out on the front lines, like it felt, it felt desperate. It felt that we were, we were at our human end somehow. I, and I, I felt the heaviness of that yeah. as a kid. Love it so much. Well, we're talking about this amazing piece that you created years ago as an album or a song cycle or a concept record. I don't even know what. Yeah. It's since become a children's book and a stage musical, everything at the Citadel from a staged reading to a full-blown theatrical production. Almost the Full Moon is the title of this work. And you're back to perform it in a really cool way this time around. Uh, the run starts tonight, runs through Sunday at the Citadel in Edmonton. What's the 2023 vibe for Almost <laughs> the Full Moon? Well, some of the kids who were in the production last year are going to be back this year singing some of the songs they were in. We felt that I wanted, um, because the show didn't get picked up at another theater in Canada this year, I wanted the feeling like, okay, let's at least revisit it and keep this open to our own hearts and open to our own minds. And to come back here and kind of revisit the idea that it was a show, a big show, and a lot of energy was put into it. And I think it was quite a beautiful show. And so that's the idea. We've come back to the Citadel to put it together in a humble way and kind of just keep it alive, actually. Yeah. And those songs, man, they are 22 or three years old. And it turns, it's that this record has turned into something that is seems to be very important to people who like my music. And I'm very grateful for it. Yeah, no kidding. I'm grateful for it, too. It's a holiday tradition in our family with our young kids. Awesome. And it's a beautiful thing. And I know we're going to have an opportunity to talk, talk about the holidays in a little bit of a festive feature that you'll be hearing in this airspace very soon. Uh, so I'm, I'm excited to kind of get into the backstory of Hawksley Workman around the festive season. But but just for now, I just I feel like the thing that really calls out to me is A, Hawksley Workman is is singing and playing in this production, which is something we haven't always seen at the Citadel. Very exciting. Yep. You're bringing Mr. Lonely. Yeah, yeah. Todd, Mr. Lonely Lumley is here with you. You're yep. your trusty uh, right-hand keyboard player. Yeah. Well, right-hand, left-hand keyboard <laughs> and, uh, and, and these young people are such talents. I'm a big fan yep. of each of these Albertan artists that uh, that you're bringing along. What's it like to, you know, to share this music with other artists that are, I mean, these 
you know, I don't want to call them kids, but they're 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 at the beginning of yeah. their arc. What's it like for you to be able to like really collaborate one on one with them? I mean, it's thrilling, Grant. Like, you know, to hear the music that you wrote coming out of somebody else's body, and they're putting their passion and all of the life they've lived and their bumps and bruises and everything that's led to that moment of them singing that song. Like, there's something very awesome in the truest sense of that for an artist, especially somebody who, you know, has been at the game a long time. It feels like it is one of those dreams I never knew I had. When mm-hmm. somebody sings my song, it's like, holy smokes, this is so, <laughs> it's, it's, it's so humbling. Yeah. I, can't even imagine what it's going to feel like this weekend for you and these young artists. And by the way, I should mention, they are Amanda Maya Rodriguez, Luke Tellier, and Charisse Falmino, all just incredible artists. Yeah, very. No, I'm lucky. And I was lucky last year when, we, when I walked in and saw the passion and the energy that had been put into the building of that show. I mean, again, that was another just so humbling. I wept every night. I'm sure I'll weep again. Like. Mm. That's the other thing. As I get older, and I watched my dad do this, you know, your your rage turns to tears when when you start to take your foot off the testosterone gas pedal. Like you, everything my dad used to holler at about, he starts to cry, and now that's where I'm at. And I just find I'm crying at everything. So yep. I know for a fact these young people are going to sing these songs tonight and the next few nights, and I will weep because that's yep. I just I cannot hold it in anymore. Yeah, it's a very emotional piece, and there's so many different. It's a real spectrum. Uh, the songs that are presented. I'd love to go to, to a song right now, which might make you weep tears of joy because it's such <laughs> a jaunty, delightful number. I've been walking around singing this to myself lately. It's perilously close to the truth. In fact, here in Edmonton, this particular season. It's the first snow of the year. Uh, can we can we play this one? Can oh, you set this one up for us? I oh. love It's the First Snow of the Year. This whole record was written in Paris, France. It was written while I was fasting, and the whole idea was that I had a piano in my apartment so that I wouldn't go out and be tempted to eat at a boulangerie or something <laughs> like this. And then it was also recorded very quickly at a studio in the north of Paris, and... You know, the French, they do things so well and by the book, and, and there was all these beautiful, slender, smoking men drinking coffees out of plastic cups who were all there as the assistants and the, and the helpers. And when it came time to whistle the, the refrain to first of the year, which is ridiculous, and it's an earworm, the kind of earworm that you, makes you wish you'd never heard that song. <laughs> these beautiful, handsome French men and their cigarette smoke just whistling, <laughs> overdubbing whistling on the song it was just so so spectacular <laughs> oh these austere french men in their turtlenecks oh beautiful and i just thought i have this rural kook from canada has come in here and st- stolen your urban <laughs> beauty from you and put it into a whistling solo anyway i will always hear those turtlenecks from now on uh, please yes okay well let's check it out right now this is hoxley workman from almost the full moon and the 2023 stage production takes place at the citadel theater a place which has been very close to the journey of this piece as a theatrical work for years uh, and that uh, journey continues tonight and the run lasts through until Sunday. Details available in CKUA's events calendar. Without further ado, here is the maestro himself, Hoxley Workman. Uh, let's whistle along. Uh, <laughs> Hawk, thank you so much for this. Thank you.